One of the things I've learned from making these videos is that GoPros can be super finicky. Uh, they could be working absolutely perfectly for a while and then all of a sudden for no reason seemingly uh, I'll run into some issues. So on this ride when I went out in early July and uh, when I got back home to start editing the video I learned that uh, the files were corrupted or at least several of the files were corrupted on the GoPro and I couldn't create a video. So a couple of weeks later, I went back out to the Great Western Trail with the intent to uh, re-record uh, the ride video. And then I would insert some of the video that I shot on uh, the 3rd of July into the video. So we might as well take a look at the map while we're here. Uh, this is where we started in St. Charles. And uh, I followed the path along this way. And right here at this corner here... Uh, is where it ends in Sycamore. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll show you exactly what this part looks like. Today's ride is at the Great Western Trail. Uh, we're going to start this ride uh, from the Horlock Prairie in St. Charles, and uh, we are going to take that all the way to where it ends in Sycamore, and then uh, ride back. I believe it's about 17 miles each way, making for about a 34-mile trip. Uh, as you can see outside, it is uh, not a cloud in the sky, so it's going to get up to like 90 degrees today, uh, but otherwise it's uh, beautiful, so I'm looking forward to a, a nice uh, calm ride today. Okay, so I'm on my way. I'm heading in a westerly direction here. Uh, behind me, you might be able to see uh, restrooms, so... Uh, as you know, I like to start and stop at places that have restrooms. It just makes sense when you're going to be out for three, four hours. I've only done this ride one other time last year with my wife and son. Uh, I don't remember a whole heck of a lot about it, actually, other than where it ends and where it begins. So. Uh, this should be a nice adventure today. Well, this section of pavement is over. We got some traffic behind me. I've always wondered what it would feel to ride one of those style bikes. And of course, then I want to try the e-bike version of that. That sounds like a lot of fun.
Well, apparently they allow snowmobiles. So, which I don't often see on trails that are paved because this section's paved. So according to that sign, you can go 35 miles an hour on a snowmobile on this section. That's very nice. So I'm just past Woolly Road uh, at the Great Western Trail, uh, 7.6 miles into the ride. I don't recall this uh, being here last year, but now we got ourselves a Station 3 uh, fire station here. It looks brand new. And they have a Thirst Aid Station, which is absolutely awesome. Drinking fountain, water bottle filler, uh, and a self-service bicycle repair station. Uh, that is great. That's total embracing the trail. So I want to go over there and check that out. Nice little path to get here. How awesome is this? It would be nice if they had a restroom here uh, for public use. Uh, if they do, I don't see any indication of it. But uh, having a water bottle filling station, drinking fountains, bike tools, air pump, uh, that's an absolutely fantastic addition to the trail. The vast majority of the 3,000 plus miles I've ridden my e-bike in the past uh, just under a year and a half, the vast majority of those trails do not have amenities like bike tools. But there are some trails that uh, do like uh, the Prairie Path is another one I could think of. The Constitution Trail definitely has tools, being a college town. But I've always wondered, I've never actually stopped to see what the tools are that they have here. So this is, I don't know what the actual name of this is, but this is to get in there and wedge your tires so you can go all the way around the rim. So that's pretty cool. What else do they have here? What size Allen wrench? And... Uh, park tools I mean that's exactly what I have at home so a t25 here they got a couple different uh, wrenches here what is this flat flat edge screwdriver here what else we got there's a Phillips screwdriver here park tool HCW6 I mean this looks like This looks like something like my uh, pedal tool. Yeah, this is fantastic. That's great. And you can pop your bike right up here if you have an issue. And then you can grab water. Hello. Then you can grab water from the station here and just fill up your bottle here. They should, they should literally have this on every single trail. I wish they did. As always, when given the opportunity, especially on uh, Independence Day weekend, take a moment to recognize old glory. 
waving in the light breeze, as she should. He's got his lights on. Again, whoever decided to make this bike friendly because it's right next to the bike trail, bravo to you because this was a brilliant idea. The only thing I need is a public restroom or a porta potty here, and then this has everything I need. From this intersection, uh, if you were to head this way on McGough Road or McGough Road, uh, and if uh, you also happen to ride a motorcycle, there's a lot of curbs on this road that are pretty popular with the, the motorcycle community around here. Uh, no real point in doing them on an e-bike, but uh, if you have a motorcycle, even a sports car, I see a lot of sports cars on this road because there's sections with nice curbs.
All right, I made it to the end in Sycamore, uh, just about 17 miles away from where the uh, trail starts in St. Charles. Uh, looking over here, I still haven't found a trail map. Uh, looks like there's a little, there's parking here, so there's trail access parking. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't see a restroom here. I don't see drinking fountains. Looks like there's some places to sit. So at this point, I'm just gonna turn around and head back to St. Charles. Probably stop at that fire station again, fill up a bottle of water, and uh, make my way back. Well, I've confirmed there's still a tremendous interest in e-bikes. It's hard to go down a trail like this. You stop and people will come up and start asking you all sorts of questions about e-bikes. Uh, but from a lady who I just had a nice conversation with, uh, she says that the trail continues to the west. And uh, ultimately their plan is to connect it all the way up to like past DeKalb. So uh, that'll be a great addition to this trail. So I'm gonna just follow this part of the trail. It's not gonna be very long, but I wanna see how far it gets me. It's uh, the Great Western Trail is officially over here, at least right now. And then this is like, I don't know, a local downtown Sycamore Trail maybe. So we'll, let's check that out. Okay, so I'm on this little extension trail. I don't know if it actually has a name yet, but uh, this is what happens when you continue west from where the uh, Great Western Trail currently ends. It's a nice neighborhood through here, nice paved trail. The lady I was speaking to about e-bikes said that there's a park up here somewhere that has a restroom, so uh, definitely interested in checking that out as I've ridden almost 18 miles. All right, well, it looks like the Caleb County has definitely started on a new portion of the trail. Uh, it's still closed currently, uh, but they have definitely got a decent amount done clearing it and uh, laying gravel. Okay, we're gonna ride ahead here. It looks like we're right in front of a park. So uh, let's check out this area. I can see some places, uh, shaded places to picnic over there. So that's good. See a couple of shady benches to sit. The lady I spoke to at the end of the Great Western Trail was telling me that this park was purchased by the town or county or someone uh, because of this mobile home flood uh, back in 2007. So now it's publicly owned and uh, they put a park here. I don't know if it floods, but it looks pretty flat. Plenty of places to picnic here. Also, I see a couple porta potties. And then, so the big question for me, because I don't know very much about this area, is how far is this going to go? And will it be called the Great Western Trail? So time will tell. The lady I was speaking to said uh, this should be done by August. So we'll see. Hopefully uh, the longer the trail is, the better. Well, uh, due to that previously mentioned GoPro issue that I had, uh, I just came back out to the trail to reshoot some video. And uh, voila, two weeks later, uh, this trail uh, is paved and lined and there are no longer do not enter signs. Uh, so we're gonna find out uh, together uh, where this trail goes. The sign here still points to the, West, the Great Western Trail going to the right here. Here's what the entrance looks like. And uh, here we go. Got ourselves a bridge here.
Well, it doesn't go incredibly far, but uh, any paths that connect to other areas and other locations is a good thing. The more paths, the better. Well, there's only a couple of times that I can remember where uh, the bridge that I was on was so new that you could smell the wood still. And uh, this is definitely one of those bridges, the one up there too. They smell brand new. And that was the Great Western Trail. Uh, it's always cool to check out new sections of trail too. So here's what this looks like in satellite view. Uh, right here is the end of the Great Western Trail, and then they have that little extension trail that goes right here past this subdivision. And this is where that new section starts, and it goes right along up here and dumps out right onto Page Street right here. And then I rode to the end just to see if there was anything at this corner, and then I rode back. And then I should also note... Uh, this is the way I went down into that park, and right over here is that porta potty I stopped at. But while I didn't show it on the video, you should be aware that, especially if you're going to do this ride starting in St. Charles, right over here is an ice cream place. So you could cut through this park, and then there's a sidewalk you could ride on all the way up to here. Uh, here's where the ice cream place is, and then you'd be able to go back and uh, back on the Great Western Trail. So since the Great Western Trail doesn't have any restrooms at the very end over here, uh, anytime I'm going to ride this ride in the future, I'm going to go all the way to this park. And then by that time, it's right around 18 miles one way. So I might as well go down, uh, get a cool snack, and then make my way back. Uh, now I just want to give you guys a quick channel update. Uh, this GoPro issue put me behind a little in the editing department. So uh, just to give you guys a little glimpse at what's uh, to come, uh, the Jane Adams Trail is a trail that starts in Freeport, Illinois, that makes its way all the way up to the Wisconsin border and back. It's very cool. That video is coming soon. Uh, after that, I did uh, something I call the West River Loop, uh, which runs on both sides of the Fox River. I think it utilizes about five different bike trails to accomplish this. It's a custom loop I created last year. Then... Uh, the Fox River State Trail in Wisconsin uh, starts in Green Bay and works its way south. That's one that's coming up. And then in that trip that my wife and I did to Door County, uh, we finished the other two sections of the Anape State Trail that we had not yet completed. So now at this point, we've completed all three sections. So those videos are coming soon. Uh, here's the Great Western Trail, that redo ride that I had to do. And then uh, the last one, the uh, most recent one that I've done, is the White, uh, the White River State Trail in Wisconsin. It starts in Elkhorn and makes its way to Burlington, and then there's another section on the other side of Burlington. That's where I picked up this nifty shirt at Pedal and Cup. So I have a bunch of videos on the way. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and have yourself an awesome week.